Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Edward Elgar. Uh, it's an important book, it's part of their research handbook series, and this particular book is on international courts and tribunals. As is the, the way with the handbook series, they are, um, they are actually edited by a couple of people and then there are a number of contributors. The editors are William A. Shabas and Shannon Brooke Murphy. The book's available as an e-book as well as an ordinary book, and it's also available at Elgar Online. Elizabeth and I looked at this book. It's part of the Research Handbooks in International Law series, and the title of our review is an important new contribution on international courts and tribunals coming to us from Edward Elgar Publishing. And, of course, they're an independent publishers uh, with a very good track record now of uh, work in this field of producing these these handbooks in the various series of books they have. This is the front cover anyway of the book. There it is there. It's, fine. it's a heavy book and it's a hardback. You can see the back of the book there. Got some detail, quite a lot of information about what's in the book. I've used some of the information as quotes in any event. Uh, the book index at the back, it runs to over 500 pages. It's by page numbering. So you should find things pretty quickly uh, here. It's quite a detailed uh, index, which is there, starts there. Then you've got a bibliography, very substantial bibliography, covering a very large range of areas because this is a detailed work. There is the front cover and there's the list of research handbooks in international law in that series. They've got a number of different series of books, but this is the one from Elgar for that series. That's the front. Then, of course, we have um, a dedication. There's information about our Ed, uh, Elgar Online. Then there's a dedication, which I'll show you there from the authors. And then we have the content section, which is structured there. You can see how it's done. It's split into parts, parts one and two. Part one is the judgments and the judges, and part two, the controversies and the challenges. And then after that, you've got the list of contributors. A large number of people involved in this, as you can see, two pages of names. I can't mention all the names in this short review. Then there are tables of cases and then after that uh, we've got uh, tables of treaties which you can see of importance and then after that you've got tables of national legislation from various parts of the world. Then, then there's a the main introduction from um, Shabbas. It's worth reading because it sets the scene I think very well indeed. You can see the structure of the book it's got public. It's got paragraph numbering, and it's also got a lot of footnoting to justify assertions made and to give you further uh, research uh, avenues. And of course, the bibliography at the back is very, very extensive. So, what do we say about the book? Well, we say this: in the introduction to what is a formidable and important work, Shabas writes that most, if not all, domestic justice systems have complex and often confusing judicial structures, a web of courts and tribunals nested in hierarchies with varying levels of responsibility and uh, specialisation and authority, just so, and to be expected. The editors and the contributors then of this new handbook write that since the establishment of the Permanent Court of Arbitration for International Dispute Resolution in 1899, yes it goes back that far, the number of international courts and tribunals has multiplied and the reach of their jurisdiction has steadily expanded, as is to be expected. And that is very much the case, of course, although the pace of change and modernisation has been rather slow with a lack of commitment by some of them. Times are, of course, changing rapidly, and Edward Elgar Publishing, who are then the independent firm which provides what is described as a synthetic overview and critical analysis of these developments, from multiple perspectives. And they go on to say this research handbook both contextualizes, sorry, contextualizes and stimulates future research and practice in this rapidly developing field. And that's exactly what we get with the handbooks. They're very helpful, I think, for, um, for scholarship purposes, um, certainly academic research. In other words, um, easier words, it's a great read at a great time of global change. I had to make it simple. Elgar and the editors have commissioned chapters specifically from leading and emerging scholars. So this, what is described as thematic 
and interpretive system-wide and interjurisdictional comparative approach to the main issues, debates and controversies related to the growth of international courts and tribunals is, we think, um, a welcome addition to the growing number of titles now available to academics in the field. And as I say, the two editors, who are William A. Shabas and Shannon Brooke Murphy, they've conducted a first-class review of influential international judgments, which traverse the area of international peace and security law, international human rights law, international criminal law, international economic law, whilst also including critical reflection by practitioners. And I think that is one of the beauties of this particular book. There's a nice little sort of mixture and balance throughout. Yes, the works uh, has a, a nuanced review of the latest thinking on scholarly debates and controversies in international courts and tribunals, and it's both a key resource for academic researchers and a concise introduction to the subject for postgraduate um, learners, students, in what is a one-stop academic text shop, if you like, for research. And really that's what you've got, because what they're doing is they're bringing everything together, and I think that makes, uh, it, makes it a little easier for us when we're doing our research, frankly. And that's really the beauty of a lot of these uh, handbooks from Algar. And of course it goes without saying that the academic community rely more and more heavily on these excellent research handbooks, which um, Edward Elgar produce for us in the legal profession. Obviously they produce lots of other books, but certainly these, this area of books are very useful. We found that the individual chapters also offer topics of practical relevance to lawyers, practitioners, and international decision makers at a time of what is not, what they call procedural uh, transition. In other words, the massive changes that we're going to be facing in the 2020s. The publication is, dited, uh, is cited at 2017 and it's available electronically and in print. Um, and I'm glad that it is because that is certainly the digitization does make a difference. I'm not wholly sold on it, but it does help. There's the front, spine and the back. I think it does help for a lot of people, but it's not actually for me. I'm not, not a great digit, digitization person, really. The middle of the book, here we go. This is the giants of the international judiciary. So a lot of, a lot of stuff here, a lot of controversy too, probably. You've got the, you can see the structure, you've got the footnoting, and you've got, again, you've got subheads and paragraph numbering, depending on which um, which part of the book you're looking at. Some of the contributors have just used the subheads and others have used um, some forms of paragraph numbering. But it does, it depends very much on the individual um, author as to what he's done. But it's a very interesting book. It's an area which I, I'm sure will uh, continue to expand. And I think this book is just, just the right book if that is where your practice takes you. Thank you very much indeed to all concerned for an excellent book. Bye-bye.